Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, it's a bit of a late upload, apologies, this is a lot later than usual, I've had a very hectic day, but, but, it's about to get even more hectic, because I was only planning on bringing you guys the match preview for tomorrow's Carabao Cup final between Chelsea and Liverpool, and hopefully Chelsea can pick up what would be technically their third Piece of silverware this season. We've got the Super Cup, the Club World Cup, possibly the Carabao Cup. Um, and some would obviously add the Champions League, but technically that was last season, so we can't count that. But um, I thought I'd give you the preview. We've got blockbuster news to get through as well. So what I'm going to do is fill you in with what's happened, give you my thoughts on all of it, and then we'll jump into the preview and looking forward to tomorrow's game. Before I do, though, I want to let you know this video is brought to you and sponsored by the OneFootball app. Make sure you download the OneFootball app now. Link in the description for all of your footballing needs, including the blockbuster news I'm about to share with you in relation to Chelsea FC, Roman Abramovich, and what he's decided to do. You can find it all in the One Football app, so make sure you hit that link in the description. Don't forget you'll count all of your uh, stats, standings, fixtures, results, everything for tomorrow's game as well is all there. So make sure you download it now. Link in the description. Let's get into this. So we're going to start off with the news. Let's start off with the news. Um, and it's kind of handy that I brought this video very late. If not, I probably wouldn't have spoken about this, but we here we have it. So Roman Abramovich has officially stepped back in his role at Chelsea Football Club. Um, just to make it clear to you, no, he has not sold the club <laughs> he has not left the club what he's done is given control away for now i want to stress for now there's no time limit on it we don't know this is as far as a strategic move very good move from roman abramovich very very good move and it's a very understandable move and we're going to get into exactly what's gone down so let's hear from the statement on chelseafc.com by the man himself mr roman abramovich take it away roman Statement from club owner Roman Abramovich. This is on the website. Um, the following statement has been published from Roman. During my nearly 20-year ownership of Chelsea FC, I have always viewed my role as a custodian of the club, whose job it is ensuring that we are as successful as we can be today, as well as build for the future, while also playing a positive role in our communities. I have always taken decisions with the club's best interest at heart. I remain committed to these values. That is why I am today giving trustees of Chelsea's charitable foundation the stewardship and care of Chelsea FC. I believe that currently they are in the best position to look after the interests of the club, players, staff and fans. Um, if we're going to jump into the detail, let's get into what's actually happened. So um, we've got three pieces of news to get through here. Um, Nizar Kinsella has told us exactly what's going down. Um, so the foundation trustees that Roman Abramovich has given control of Chelsea FC to include Bruce Buck, John Devine or Devine, Emma Hayes, the Chelsea women's manager, Piara Power, Paul Ramos, Sir Hugh Robertson, and I believe I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a few more on that list. Um, but Nizar goes on to say these trustees will answer questions usually served for Roman Abramovich but the day-to-day -day running of the club remains in the hands of Marina Granovskaya, Petr Cech and the other senior staff at the club. Uh, this is from Matt Law. Chelsea insists that Roman Abramovich made the move to protect Chelsea in a time where the club was in danger of suffering reputational and strategic damage. Matt Law goes on to say Abramovich wants the players, staff and manager to continue to operate without the constant issue of Ukraine overshadowing their, effort, their efforts. Telegraph Sport know of at least one party to be weighing up a takeover offer. That's the latest. Also, Abramovich turned down all approaches in 2019, including uh, one from American billionaire Todd Bowley, worth a reported three billion euro uh, dollars. Sorry, three billion dollars. But that was in 2019. Um, so basically, what 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 has happened? What has happened? This is this is what's happened. Roman Abramovich has basically given the keys to all the names I've just mentioned. But he remains as the owner of the club. Now, there's two ways you can look at this. One way is Roman Abramovich is still the owner of the club. He's given the keys to whoever, the names I've just mentioned. And they are going to be making the day-to-day -day decisions of the club. At the same time, I don't think anyone can really control those people getting in touch with Roman if they ever need to. Right? 
Now, unless if that is being monitored, then you could possibly say maybe Roman has already outlined the plan and he's handed it all over and he's gone, here you go. It's not going to be me, but I want you to do this. That's one. Secondly, you can look at this as Roman Abramovich possibly beginning to let go of control of the club and will entertain a bid if there was a bid to come in and possibly sell Chelsea Football Club in the lead up. Option number three could be Roman Abramovich making this move just to keep Chelsea away from everything that's going on because let's have it right, this issue with Ukraine and Russia isn't going to end tomorrow, right? Especially in terms of a geopolitical uh, structure, geopolitically there's so much at play it's unbelievable um so this is an issue that's just going to disappear overnight so roman could be doing this just to protect chelsea football club make it obviously look like look i'm not running the club yes technically i'm still the owner by the way he's not owner by name in terms of roman abramovich it's his company i believe fortune if i'm not mistaken don't quote me on that that are the owners of chelsea football club which is his so you know that's basically the link. But he could be doing this up until all of this blows over. It could be a matter of months. It could be into next season. It could be in two years. Who knows? But once all of this with Ukraine, Russia blows over, maybe Roman steps back in. Obviously, right now, as it stands in the United Kingdom, he is not on the UK sanction list for Russia. He's not. There's no mention of Roman at the moment, I have to stress. So going forward, maybe he's just done this to protect Chelsea. Don't involve Chelsea Football Club in this, basically. If you're going to deal with anyone, you just deal with me. Leave Chelsea out of this. He could be doing that just to protect Chelsea's image. Because let's have it right. And I spoke on Goonie's channel yesterday. This could involve Chelsea. If he didn't make this move, this probably would have involved Chelsea. Especially going in into games, future games. Talk about... The Premier League's already approved in terms of making any statements for Ukraine and support and all of that. I mean, how is that going to look in Chelsea's eyes? Not as a club, but people's perception of Chelsea Football Club being run by a Russian, you know? So maybe he's just done this to protect Chelsea. We'll wait and see. But I can tell you, he has not sold Chelsea. He is still the owner. He's just not running the day-to-day -day operations at all at the moment. But it's a wise move. It's a strategic move. And it's a good one for Chelsea Football Club. That I have to say. So we'll wait and see what happens going forward. Let's jump into the Carabao Cup final. Because obviously, yeah, we've got a final to play tomorrow. Right? And I hope all of this doesn't affect the morale of the team. Realistically, it shouldn't. If, especially if you know from a footballing standpoint, if you've played football at any level, you would know um, that, you know, when it comes to the day, when it comes to a match day, when it comes to a game on the pitch, you don't let anything affect you. Right? That's how it should be. Um, and right now, the team are stable. Everyone is stable. There's a job to do. Thomas Tuchel will have all of his players and their attention and he'll go for it, as well as the players. So I don't think they'll be truly affected by this. This is, you know, politics behind the scenes. You know, it's all to do with senior management and all of that. They do what they have to do. Um, but going into tomorrow's game, it's going to be a tough one. We're not playing, you know, Burton Albion. We're playing Liverpool. With all due respect to Burton Albion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only mentioning Burton Albion because I think there's an Algerian who signed there and an, an ex-Algerian international who was signed there. So, um, yeah, congrats, Burton Albion. I'm happy for you. But in terms of Chelsea Football Club, Liverpool tomorrow in the Carabao Cup final is not going to be easy. It's a trophy. We have to go all out. Um, it'd be nice to have. I have to stress, it's not the end of the world if we were not to win it tomorrow. But we can't go into that mindset. We've got to go into a mindset of, look, we're looking to win tomorrow. It's Wembley. It's a cup final. Anything can happen. Form goes out of the window. Let's take it 11 v 11 and see what happens. Liverpool are a very strong team in very good form. But as I've already mentioned, in a final, form goes out the window. Although they have been looking good. Liverpool have looked very, very good recently. Chelsea have come into this in a great mindset. Won the Club World Cup, have come back, managed to nick a win at Palace, which wasn't easy, managed to beat Lille in the Champions League. So we've got a little bit of rhythm. We've got maximum rhythm that we could potentially ask for. Yeah, we've got everything that we've asked for going into this game. So now we should be in a good mindset. In terms of who's going to play, who's available, well, aside from Ben Chilwell, Ben Chilwell, Reese James, I think is going to be potentially on the bench. We'll wait and see. I don't personally look, I don't think they'll risk him. 
but he could be an option on the bench. Apart from Ben Chilwell, everyone is ready. Mason Mount is returning. He's fit and ready. Ziyech Kovacic's injuries are gone. They were very minor. No no worries there. So they're going to be available. So in terms of selection, Thomas Tuchel is everyone available. In terms of Liverpool, I think it's the same could be said for them. I don't think they have any major injury concerns. And Thiago Alcantara is an option that they can go to this time, un unlike previous games that we've played against Liverpool. If you remember our last game against Liverpool in the league at Stamford Bridge, we managed to, you know, come back in that game. We were 2-0 down, we got back to 2-2 very quickly. But we got back to 2-2 with the mindset of lads, we're 2-0 down, we've got nothing to lose, let's just give it everything, and it worked. So I hope tomorrow we go into that mindset. We go into the game thinking, look, it's a final. We have to play it right. We have to play it cool, but we can win this. In terms of how we approach this game, I it's so, 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 so difficult to read tactically. It's so difficult. Why? Because Chelsea are comfortable when they play possession-based football. They're also happy to sit back and try and defend and play on the counter. Liverpool are very comfortable when it comes to possession-based football, but Liverpool have a lethal counter-attack when they have to launch one. So how both teams are actually going to approach this, I don't know. Who's going to go into this trying to seize the control? Probably both teams. Which team are going to make sure that they can try and launch a counter-attack when the opportunity arises? Probably both teams. So uh, it's very, 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 very hard to read in terms of how Klopp's going to approach it, how Tuchel's going to approach it. In terms of Tuchel, I would like to see Chelsea be proactive. I don't want us to be reactive. I don't want us to just sit back and wait because I honestly believe if you give Liverpool control of the game, they will score. They will, surely. Unless if defensively we are unbelievable, but without Chilwell and without Reese James... I think there's loopholes and I'm scared of that. So I want to see Chelsea control the game tomorrow. And the midfield is going to be key where we can control the game. I want to see us take the initiative. I want to see us with the most possession. I want to see us with more control of the ball. Um, I want to see us with more actions. Liverpool are going to have chances, but we have to minimise them. We have to be the ones with the ball. Keep the ball. Keep the ball. All game. Do your best to keep the ball as much as possible. That is how I would approach it. And we have to be lethal in attack, which is obviously going to ask questions. Who starts tomorrow in attack? Now, obviously, the Lille game was a very cool blueprint. Um, but I don't think Tuchel is going to approach it in the same way. If it were me, I would. But that's just me. And it's very easy to say when you're not actually manager of Chelsea Football Club going into a final against a top team. It's easier said than done. But let's get into it and what I think Thomas Tuchel is going to do tomorrow. I stress, what I'm about to show you is what I think he's going to do, not what I would do. I'll, I'll explain as we go along. Let's get into it. So, let's start off with the formation. Personally, I would go with a very similar setup to how we faced against Lille. Back four. But I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're going with a back five or back three. Technically, I think we're playing wing backs tomorrow. Just to try and contain Liverpool's lethal attack. Put the numbers there. Don't allow any avenue through. I think in a back four, there's a chance we might get exposed. But offensively, I think that helps us. Although, you know, pros and cons. Anyway, Mendy in goal is what I think. I don't think Kepa will start this one. Although Klopp has already, I think, confirmed that Kelleher is the cup goalkeeper for Liverpool. And he's going to be starting tomorrow, not Alisson. So that's a positive in my mind. Despite, I think Kelleher's a really good goalkeeper. He already proved that at Stamford Bridge when he played um, against us in the league. So, you know, I don't think they're going to be missing too much. But... He's not Allison. However, for us, Kepa, if Kepa were to start tomorrow, I'm cool. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with whoever starts, but I think Mendy is the number one. Mendy will start. It's a final. He's going to play. So, uh, Edouard Mendy. In terms of the back three, I think we're going to be going Christensen, Thiago Silva, Antonio Rüdiger. Personally, as I said, I would go the back four. But when you're having to deal with Mo Salah, uh, Firmino, Jota, Mane, whoever's going to be starting in that attacking lineup for Liverpool, a back four... Chances are they're getting through. <laughs> so you have to you have to pack the numbers out. You have to and make it difficult for them in order to get past. Um, so I think that's how we're going to be setting up. So that's the back three. In terms of the wing backs, personally, uh, there's no other option. I think it's going to be Aspi and I think it's going to be Alonso. Some would probably ask for Malang Sar. Malang Sar is not a wing back. It's not going to happen. Alonso will start. In this formation, at least, Alonso is backed up by Rudiger. At least. You know, if this was a back four, Alonso will get smoked. <laughs> Let's have it right. Aspilicueta on the right-hand side, hopefully he has a good game. But this is where my concern is in this formation, we'll be too defensive. We'll be too, we'll be happy to relinquish the ball to Liverpool and allow them to have control of the game. And I do not want us to do that. That is why I would go to a back four. 
because I would go all out. But as I've said, it's easier said than done. I just hope Thomas Tuchel has this very thought out, and I'm sure he will. But personally, in a wing-back system, Espeliqueta on the right, Alonso on the left. In terms of the midfielders, I think it's going to be Kante and Kovacic in a two. Next to the wing backs, without question. Kovacic has looked sublime. He's injury free, so he plays. Kante's Kante, you know what he's going to do. And especially with the midfield involving Thiago Alcantara tomorrow, if he is going to be starting for Liverpool, you need these two to contain him. It's as simple as that. In order for us to move the ball quickly, have a good attacking threat, have good defensive ability, I think this is the one this is the one to go with. Some would argue for Jorginho. But if we are going to not have control of the game, Jorginho is not the man to stick with as far as I'm concerned. So personally, I would go these two. Now, the front three, there's a big debate here. Personally, I wouldn't go with what I'm about to say in one position. And I'm, I'm going to tell you. So Ziyech has to start. He will be as a right wing forward, not as a right winger. Because if we're playing in a 3-4-3, this is how it's going to be. If in a back five, you're going to have... Wing forwards. So Ziyech on the right, he has to start. He's the first name on the sheet at the moment. His consistency is through the roof. He has to play. Now, personally, I would go Pulisic on the left. I would stick with what worked against Lille. I don't think Tuchel's going to do that tomorrow. And I can understand. I think he's going to play Mount. I think he's going to play Mount. Mount is very press resistant. Mount is very energetic. Mount is someone that will help you defend from the front and allow to win you possession from the front. Um... If he does that, I stress, if he does that, if he doesn't and they bypass him, we're wasting a man, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But I think he will play just to disrupt Liverpool's technical ability in their defence because they can move the ball very well. They can move the ball very quickly. They need some pressure. And Mount is the man to go to if you want to apply pressure. So Mason Mount, I think, is going to start. Personally, Pulisic in an attacking sense would be beneficial just like he was against Lille he was everywhere he was coming back defending he was up front he was attacking he was contributing he was tucking in he was going out he was passing he was taking chances he scored I want to see that against Liverpool but I think Mount will play just for what he brings to the table in terms of disrupting Liverpool so Mount I think is going to start and up front I think it's a no-brainer <laughs> It's a no-brainer. I'm not going to get into it just like I normally do. It's very easy to understand at this point. And if you haven't understood it to this point, uh, then I hope you do tomorrow. Because personally, Havertz has to play. His performance against Lille was fantastic. He was everywhere. He's everything you need in terms of an attacker. And the way that he was playing, if he does that tomorrow, he's a big game player. We saw what it was like in the Champions League final. We saw what it was like in the Club World Cup final. We're going to see what he's like tomorrow in the Carabao Cup final. It's as simple as that. This is a chance for all these lads to win the Carabao Cup for the first time. So I hope they all put in a good performance. Kai Havertz right now is our modern day Didier Drogba when it comes to a big game performance performance I need someone who's going to show up at a big game you ask Kai Havertz it's as simple as that so I think he's going to be playing tomorrow and I hope he does because right now when he's playing we have 11 men on the pitch when he's not we have 10 it's as simple as that so Kai Havertz starts tomorrow hopefully he scores but that is what I think Thomas Tuchel is going to go with tomorrow and in terms of a score prediction, this is very hard. It could honestly go in 90 minutes to Chelsea, to Liverpool. It could go to extra time. It could go to penalties. Anything is possible tomorrow because it's so tight. It's so tight. But I have to put my blue hat on. I have to put my blue tinted glasses on. And I have to be a bit optimistic. It's a final. Anything can happen. So I'm going to go within 90 minutes. A lot of the other guys think it's going to go to extra time. I don't want it to go to extra time. I'm not about that life. I want 90 minutes. I want it done. <laughs> I'm going to go Chelsea 2, Liverpool 1. I think Liverpool have a lot of quality. They will score. But I'm hoping Chelsea get one more. You know, just like the song goes. I forgot what song it was. Is it Blue Day or is it Blue Tomorrow? Or is it Blue as, is it blue as the colour? Um, something along the lines of we're going to score one more than you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so I hope that's going to be the case tomorrow. Chelsea win the Carabao Cup. Hopefully everything with Roman doesn't affect the team. We bring more trophies home. Let's see what happens. I will be doing a watch along for tomorrow's final. So make sure you're here for that. After the game, I'll give you my post-match review as well. So make sure you're here for that too. But I'll see all of you then. Have a good one. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below in terms of the story of Roman. What do you think about it? How do you think we should approach tomorrow? What's your score predictions? What are your lineups? I'd love to know. Hit me up in the comments and I'm going to read it all up until tomorrow's watch along. So have a good one. Enjoy your evening. I'll see you all tomorrow. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. And I'll see you tomorrow. Come on, Chelsea. Let's bring another trophy home. Another one.
<laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. Take care. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. And peace.